So anyone who is just logging on, again, it is Brittany with Scott Leroy Marketing, and today we're going to be going over smart plans. So smart plans are going to be your automated drip campaigns through command. So if you're looking to send out kind of like an email, then three days later, a text message, three days later, another email, that's what your smart plans are going to allow you to do. So this is not to get confused with email campaigns. Email campaigns are when you go to send out a mass email and that's it. It's one mass email and then it's done. Smart plans are going to trigger other actions within themselves. So today we're going to be covering smart plans. Everything that I am going to be going through today will be through command, which is the agent.kw.com portal. So I'm going to go ahead and get logged in here. Once we are logged into the command platform, the first thing we're going to jump into is going to be the back end of your command platform so we can make sure that your command mail, your Twilio, and your marketing profile are either live and available. If not, we'll go over also how to launch those. So once we are logged into the command platform, we're going to go ahead and click on our name in the top right-hand corner, and then we'll go ahead and click on settings. So our name and then settings. Once we're in this settings section, this is where our command mail and our Twilio platforms are going to pull from. All we're going to do is scroll all the way down towards the bottom, and we're going to see both of these items populating here. And I'm going to go over both of them with you guys as well. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit, realizing how small that must look. So first things first, we have our command mail underneath our email services. Command mail is essentially how your smart plans are going to be sent out. That is the platform in which your mass emailing for smart plans will be going through. So you also will notice that you do have access to link up your MailChimp, which Scott's account is connected here. MailChimp will work for email campaigns. However, it is not compatible with smart plans. So if you're sending out that one mass email, you're using the email campaign platform, that's that little mega horn on the left-hand side. If you're sending it out as an email campaign, that's that, again, one and done email. When you send that out, if you're trying to utilize that through your MailChimp account, that's completely fine. That's an option. You would just integrate your MailChimp account here. For today's class, again, we're going over smart plans. So those are going to be drip campaigns, have a little bit more than just a mass email. Normally there's multiple emails involved, maybe some text messages, maybe some tasks, reminders to call folks, anything along those lines, that's going to be through smart plans. And all of those, the email portion is going to be fed through your command mail. So in order to make sure that this is live and set up the way that you'd like it to be set up, we're just going to go ahead and click on manage. So for command mail, we'll go ahead and click on manage. Once that shows up, we're going to see exactly how the sender name is going to go out. We're also going to see what the reply email is set up as. So as of right now, Scott's sender email is set up as Scott Leroy Marketing or Scott Leroy. It used to be Scott Leroy Marketing. And then the email is set up as support at Scott Leroy Marketing. That being said, this can be edited. So if you're looking to set this up a little bit differently, maybe you're looking to have your sender name show up as your team. Maybe you're looking to have the reply email be another inbox. Whatever you'd like, you can adjust this accordingly. The reply email, the main purpose of that actual email is to make sure that when somebody replies to any email that is sent through command mail, whether it is a smart plan or an email campaign, they want to make sure that that response gets to you as the agent. So making sure that that reply to email is set up in a way that you want it to be, make sure that this is the correct inbox that you are actively checking, that's going to make sure that any responses that come over go directly to you. Again, for your name, if you have a spouse team or a team or anything like that, maybe you're an administrator for a team and you want to update it to reflect that, that's completely fine. You can change that here. The second I go to make an edit, you'll notice that my save changes is now available to be clicked. So I'll just add marketing in here and then I'll do my save changes and it will lock that in. Um, as far as our reply email, I'll be going over this again in a little bit once we're in actual smart plans, just to show you guys how to confirm that your reply to email stuck and it's actually showing up properly for your smart plans before you start sending them out. If 
but just make sure it looks correct here for now. You also have access to see your monthly account usage. So for command mail, KWRI does provide you with 5,000 emails per month. You do have access to purchase more. So if you have a larger database or maybe you're just utilizing more email marketing, that's completely fine. You have access to come in here and do manage subscription. Manage subscription is going to automatically bring you into the marketplace for command mail, which means this little house up here, that's where marketplace is. Generally, it's a little bit quicker to come into settings and click here. That way you don't have to go looking for command mail. It will just bring you exactly where you need to go. And it breaks down a couple of different packages that you have access to purchase. Um, as far as kind of like the bare minimum, you can add, I think it's 1,000, 5,000, 10,000, 15,000 that you can add to your account. Um, Price-wise, I want to say they're only a couple bucks. Um, and then you would just link your credit card and it would automatically give you that allowance each month, which is pretty nice. So you do have access to add that in. So just keep that in mind. If you are at a point, especially around the holidays, I know this was a question we got a lot in November um, as agents are sending out maybe more holiday or holiday related emails, they'll have access to kind of bulk up on their allowance for command mail. So if you guys are interested in doing that, you can go ahead and click on manage subscription. I'm gonna go ahead and X out of this. The other option that you guys have access to is Twilio. So as of right now, Twilio is the only platform available for mass text messaging through command. We are hopeful that there will be another platform added on soon. Um, however, we just don't have an ETA for when that will be available. So as of right now, it is Twilio. Twilio is the way that you guys can send mass text messages directly through the command portal. So what ends up happening is once you click on subscribe in Marketplace, it will have you sign up for a brand new account. If you have an existing Twilio account, set up maybe externally from command, that's completely fine. Unfortunately, that account can't be used with command. However, you can transfer your number and then close that original account. So you can transfer your number, but you can't transfer the actual account to a command account. The account, just like a lot of the other platforms that will integrate with command, it does need to be created through the command platform. So when it comes time to subscribe in the marketplace, it gives you all of the different kind of packages, all of the different options that you have, you would select whichever one would apply to you, then you'd go ahead and plug in your credit card number. And again, it will automatically bill you on a monthly basis for the allowance in which you chose for Twilio. The one thing I do recommend is keep an eye on your Twilio text messages. <laughs> the way that it is set up currently is you can automatically trigger Twilio text messages through smart plans. You can also do this manually through your database. You do have access to just send out a bulk text message through Twilio, just through your actual database, doesn't have to go through a smart plan, but keep an eye on the amount of credits that are utilized per text message. So there is an article provided by Keller Williams International, which I'll make sure to hyperlink underneath the recording for you guys that breaks down exactly what to expect when you're utilizing Twilio. And it will let you know how many credits per text message, how many credits would be added on for emojis, what happens if you go over the character limit. It just kind of breaks that down for you so you know what to expect as you're using Twilio. Um, but if you guys haven't signed up for that, that's completely fine. You do have access to, again, click on subscribe in Marketplace and that will run you through the full process. Or if this is something that maybe you're not ready to sign up for, that's also completely fine. It's not required in order to run smart plans. It's just an additional option if you're looking to send out mass text messages. So if you're looking to do mass text messages, you would need to essentially purchase this. If text messaging is not something that you're seeing as being usable for you at this time, that's completely fine. You can skip over this part. The next section is going to be your marketing profile. So most of you probably already have your marketing profile set up, but in order to access that, it's going to be under your connect settings on the left-hand side. And once we expand that, we're going to see marketing profile right underneath. We're gonna go ahead and click on that. And as far as your marketing profile goes, think of this as your ground zero for marketing. So anything that you guys are doing, whether it's through smart plans, through email campaigns, you're using your command website, you're using the mobile app, all of those platforms are actually going to pull your details through this marketing profile. So this marketing profile is literally, it's your ground zero for marketing. 
So as long as your information is showing up correctly here, it's going to automatically syndicate out to all of those platforms based on whatever information you've plugged into this page. So first things first, we've got our headshot. You'll notice that it fits into a circle. So for the circular headshot, we want to make sure that it is added in here and it has been cropped to be a square. If you are utilizing a headshot that has not yet been cropped to be a square, you'll notice that it looks a little bit funky. It usually stretches it or squishes it. It distorts the image. If your headshot is showing up distorted here, it is going to show up distorted across all of your marketing. So make sure that you are cropping that to be a square before you add it. For the team logo, the same rules do not apply. If your logo looks a little bit funky here, that's completely fine. The system will actually update accordingly across all of the marketing. It's only the photo, the actual headshot that needs to be cropped to be a square. Both the team logo and the brokerage logo, which will be a little bit further down, can be imported or added as either a rectangle, a square, a circle. It doesn't matter. Um, as long as you're essentially uploading that image here, it will correct itself on all of your marketing for you automatically, which is pretty cool. Scrolling down a smidge more, we have our My Details section, starting with our first name and our last name. Um, as far as the names go, pretty straightforward. Make sure you're within compliance. So if you happen to go by a nickname, but your state and board requires that your legal name is on all of your information, make sure that your legal name is nestled in there and maybe your nickname is in parentheses or quotes or a dash. Make sure that you're just following compliance for that first and last name. This also goes for your agent license number, your team name, and your professional job title. Make sure that all of these items are within compliance. There are certain things that cannot be used for a team name, so make sure if that's the case, you are leaving those words out of your team name, especially when going through that mass rebrand. You want to make sure that you've already confirmed with your broker that it's compliant before you start updating marketing. For your slogan, you'll notice that a slogan is required. If you don't have a slogan offhand, you can just type in for all your real estate needs. <coughs> Or if you have a slogan that you're looking to use, you can utilize that. I've also seen some teams just replicate their team name. That's completely fine as well. Someone just reached out and asked um, about the recording. So our recording will be on YouTube. And then as far as cropping a headshot, um, if you're having trouble cropping the headshot to be a square, you can shoot that over to us and we can take care of that for you. Um, we generally just use our computers platform. Most computers, Mac or PC, will give you kind of just like a photo editor or a picture editor where you can crop it right within there. So moving down a smidge further, designations, again, make sure you're within compliance. Some will require Realtor, all caps with the registered R. Other areas may require like licensed real estate agent, licensed real estate representative. Make sure that you're just following whatever your board and brokerage prefer. prefer. <clears throat> We also have military affiliation. You'll notice that we have access to select one of four. Once you select one of these, the actual branch will show up on the right-hand side. If none of these apply to you, you can leave it blank and it will not show up on any of your marketing. For your bio, you'll notice that Scott's bio is set up so it has all of these line breaks in between. Those are intentional. So if you're looking to have spaces and or line breaks in between your bio, just make sure that you hit enter a couple of times and this is how it will show up on your actual marketing. So if somebody were to pull up Scott's mobile app or his website or his profile on the office website, this is how the bio is going to show up on all of those platforms. Scrolling down a smidge more, we have our contact information. So for our contact information, you'll notice that a mobile phone and a office phone are both required. This is not something that you can bypass. So if you're not looking to have the office number on your marketing information, you can replicate your mobile number, but keep in mind it is going to do exactly that and it's going to replicate your mobile number. Unfortunately, where office number is required, there is no way to bypass that. So if you happen to have maybe like a landline that you use for work, I've also seen agents utilize that. Or if they have a Google voice number, um, an administrator, anything along those lines, that's sometimes what they put for office number. For email and website, email, make sure that this is the email that you're running all of your real estate business through. If you are using the KW email, that's completely fine. But if you're using an additional email, that's also completely fine. Whatever email address that you plan on corresponding with your clients through is what should be populating here. For your website, 
if you are utilizing the website URL that ends in .kw.com, make sure that in this section, the website does not start with www. If you have www. at the beginning of your website, it's going to pull up a privacy error. The command websites ending in .kw.com will not work with www. So if you're seeing that, you can just remove the www and you're good to go. Again, if you're using the .kw.com, you'll also want to make sure that HTTPS semicolon forward slash forward slash is entered at the beginning of the website URL. This is going to make your website clickable from all of your marketing automatically, which is definitely going to make things a little bit easier for your clients. Instead of having to copy and paste this URL to another platform, it's going to allow them to just click directly on the website from your mobile app, from your footer of your smart plan emails, any of those platforms, it will be clickable automatically. If you're using a custom domain and it doesn't end in .kw.com, you purchased a domain through GoDaddy, Namecheap, any of those platforms, if you're unsure how to put the URL in here, let us know. We can take a look and make sure that it's added correctly as it is going to be dependent on how the domain was originally set up and linked to the website itself. It's also based on domain provider, so there's really no consistent answer. Um, so if you guys do get stuck, just let us know. We can take a look. Moving down to our brokerage information, we have our brokerage logo. This is a perfect example. This looks very funky here, but it does automatically correct itself across all platforms. <laughs> this is not how it will show up on any of the marketing. It will show the full Keller, Keller Williams lo logo across everything. As far as your brokerage information on the right, just make sure that this looks accurate. Meaning if you're with a business center, you're with a team, anything along those lines, make sure that this address specifically makes sense. Make sure that it's a local address. It's not your home address. If you recently transferred offices, make sure that this matches your current information. Scrolling down a smidge more. <clears throat> We have our compliance section. So compliance is going to be 100% based on your board and your brokerage itself. So what I have here is likely not going to match what you guys need. In regards to our legal footer text, <laughs> sorry, in regards to our legal footer text, generally we see agents add in that each Keller Williams office is independently owned and operated. You can remove that if you physically typed that in here. That's actually a standard legal footer that will show up on every piece of marketing that you create through command automatically through Keller Williams International. So if you add that in here as well, it actually shows up twice. So if you have each office is independently owned and operated or some variation of that, feel free to remove that from here just to avoid duplicates on all of your marketing platforms. If you do have specific text that needs to be plugged in here, by all means, you can paste that in. You also have access to add legal footer links, all of my Texas and New York agents. This is kind of a red flag for you guys. Make sure that you have your SOP links and your fair housing, New Yorkers. And then for my Texas agents, make sure that you have your IABS and CPN notices. Those are two states that require those to be on all of your marketing. And by adding it as a clickable link, it will happen automatically, which is just gonna make life a little bit easier for you guys. If there is a particular URL you're trying to add, I've also seen agents add like vendors or if they have any information based on COVID, especially when all of that was happening, you have access to kind of add this in as a footer link. So that's completely fine as well. You also have access to add legal footer images. So legal footer images are designed for any sort of compliant images that you need to add. However, I have seen agents utilize this to also add their designation logos. Very creative and also completely fine. Just keep in mind that they show up very tiny. They're only 128 by 48 pixels, which is essentially a thumbnail. So as long as you kind of double check, make sure that it looks correct. Um, but as far as adding your designation logos, that's completely fine. Or if you wanna add like equal housing or anything like that, you can add that in here as well. Scrolling down a smidge more, we do have our social platforms. So this is my personal opinion, and I want to make that clear. If you guys are adding social media platforms for Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, create business pages. Don't add your personal pages, specifically because these are going to show up on all of your real estate marketing. So making sure that you're promoting a business page that also ties into your real estate career 
is important, just kind of to make sure that you're sharing that across the brand. If you haven't had a chance to create a business page yet, don't panic. We have tip videos that will go over how to do it. Um, so if that's something that you're interested in, let us know. We can always shoot those over to you. Um, and then you can just add the business page URL once that's available. And again, that's a personal recommendation. If you are dead set on adding your personal page, that's completely fine. Just to keep in mind, it is going to show up on all of your marketing. So just be mindful of what you're posting on your social media platforms. Um, for YouTube and LinkedIn, YouTube, as long as it's real estate based or you have some sort of real estate following on your YouTube channel, that's completely fine. I've seen virtual open houses. Um, I've seen like walkthroughs, things like that. Great idea, great opportunity to get that information out there. So that's perfectly fine to add. LinkedIn, really any profile you guys create on LinkedIn is going to be a business profile. So you're golden there. <laughs> Last but not least, we have Google Analytics. <clears throat> For Google Analytics, Google recently did an update. I want to say it was back in June now. It feels like forever ago. Um, but they did an update back in the summer of 2022. And Command has not yet updated their system to kind of pick up where that update left off. So you can set up Google Analytics. However, from what we've seen, it's not actually tracking the updates yet. However, we are hopeful that that will be live soon. We are kind of under the impression that it's something that will be happening this calendar year. Um, but if you guys have questions, if you guys set it up previously, you're grandfathered in. But if you are setting it up now from scratch, we have seen that it's not yet tracking information. Google Analytics is designed to track the traffic of your command website. So if you're utilizing the command website tucked underneath that consumer tab by setting up Google Analytics, it's going to track the traffic, the visitors, the click the click rate, all of that for the actual website, which is pretty cool. So I do recommend setting it up. It's just not yet tracking until those updates are finalized. Um, if you guys did make any changes, go ahead and click save all the way down at the bottom. And I'll go ahead and exit. And then the last thing I want to show you guys is actually an example before we jump into smart plans. So as far as your marketing profile goes, if you guys have ever gone to set up an email campaign, you've ever gone to set up a smart plan, which we're about to dive into, when you utilize an email campaign template, which is essentially through that designs platform, you can create an email campaign template. It has a footer at the bottom of it. The footer pulls from your marketing profile. It's very important to make sure that this information is kept up to date because I'm going to drag over an email. This is from Lori Godfrey. She has since retired real estate, but this is the example I have. Um, I have Lori Godfrey in here. So this was her brokerage logo, all of her contact information. Notice how her website is still clickable. And this is an old email website is still clickable because she had the HTTPS. And this is specifically the neighborhood nurture smart plan. But notice when I scroll down, we have our footer. It pulls all of her information. We have all of her information here automatically makes her download my app clickable. This all happens automatically. It pulls from the marketing profile and your command account. So as you guys start to dabble with email campaigns and smart plans, when you're utilizing those email templates through that design tab and that footer is being a little bit difficult, don't panic. The footer is not meant to be manually updated. So when you start to manually update that footer, it starts to kind of get a little bit glitchy. And that's because it happens automatically. You actually don't have to do anything. So just something I wanted to cover because we're about to pull up some examples in smart plans as well. It does automatically pull all of your information. Um, this little error message is due to a logo that we removed shortly after doing this example. So that was on us. But you'll notice all of the brokerage information shows up, her team name shows up, and then all of her compliance information also shows up at the bottom. So, and this is her compliant text that she had added on her marketing profile. <clears throat> so it pulls everything for you automatically. So just in case you guys do run into that, don't panic. It pulls from your marketing profile. So if you ever see a discrepancy on those smart plans or those email campaigns, come in here and check this out first. So now that we have completed our marketing profile, make sure that on the top right-hand side, you have that little green toggle switch. It should say, use my information to brand my agent site. Make sure it's a green bubble. If it's a gray bubble, that means that you're not yet sharing all of that information you put that time into and getting that put together. It's not actually being shared with your marketing. So we just wanna make sure that this is a green bubble. Once you guys have confirmed that is good to go, we're gonna go ahead and click on smart plans. So if you guys ever second guess 
what tab it is. I know you, normally it should show it to you if you hover over it, but if you guys ever second guess, white KW, red square, this is going to label all of the tabs for you, which sometimes it just makes it a little bit easier. Um, but smart plans is the fourth one down and we're just gonna go ahead and jump into those. Once we have, oh, once we have our smart plan section up, I'm going to first go over kind of what's available under the smart plans dashboard, what's available under this tab, and then we'll start jumping into actual custom smart plans, show you guys how to pull them and start making them active. First things first, when we get onto our smart plan section, just in case I have any folks who are on a team, if you guys are on a team, you'll notice that you can toggle back and forth. You'll actually have a completely different version of smart plans under your team profile. So if you guys are looking to work out of your team profile, I do recommend swapping over right now. If you're an individual agent, you only have one profile, you're good to go where you are. Or if you're looking to work out of your personal profile, you're good to go where you are. Um, but if you are looking to create smart plans on a team level, just make sure you swap over to that profile. Um, your access to smart plans will be based on permissions with that particular team. So if that's an issue, I recommend touching base with the Rainmaker. But just in case, if I have any folks on Teams, we'll swap over to that one. Um, as far as your smart plans tab goes, we have a couple of things populating right off the bat. We have our My Smart Plans tab and our Library tab. Our My Smart Plans tab is exactly what it sounds like. These are smart plans that are already at your fingertips. These are smart plans that you've downloaded. You can essentially now edit, you can customize, you can tweak, and you can start adding contacts directly to that plan. That being said, we also have our library, which we'll be jumping into shortly. This is where all of your smart plans that are provided by Keller Williams International, provided by peers, provided by other market center staff, this is kind of where they sit. So you have access to locate those smart plans and utilize them. So instead of having to recreate the wheel, you can actually grab a smart plan that maybe a peer created and manipulate it to fit your needs, which is pretty nice. So you do have access to all of those under the library. We also have a search by smart plan name. If you are in a situation similar to Scott, so Scott has 35 smart plans created, you may not wanna go through your smart plans one by one to find one, in one, one specific smart plan, which is completely fine. You do have access to search for one. So maybe you remember creating one that had the word mobile in it. You can type in the word mobile and it will tell you whether or not you have one that's published. And you can do this through anything. You can type on anything and it's going to pull smart plans that would apply to whatever you're typing in here. We also have access to create brand new and custom smart plans. If you are looking to create a completely custom smart plan, that's an option by clicking on this create button. It's going to prompt you to create a title for that smart plan, and then you can start dropping actions into that physical plan. You'll also notice that we have a semi-scary message letting us know that we don't have Twilio activated. That is completely fine. So again, for any of my agents that do not want to sign up for Twilio as of right now, you can just kind of ignore this message and just keep in mind as you are utilizing smart plans, maybe avoid the ones that are based on text messaging, just so you're not causing too many tasks for yourself. Generally, what will happen is if you have this error message showing up saying you do not have Twilio, if you go to utilize a smart plan that has text messaging in it, what will happen is as each contact hits the action that is a text message, it's going to create a task for you in your tasks related to that contact profile. So if you add 15 people to a smart plan that has text messages, you're going to get 15 tasks saying, John Smith, Sally Smith, Sue, don't have Twilio, couldn't send text message, it's going to let you know. And if the smart plan has multiple text message actions, maybe it sends a text five days later, sends an email, five days later, sends another text, then you're looking at 30 tasks for those 15 agents or 15 clients. So it's just something to keep in mind if you are still utilizing smart plans that have text messages on them as an action, I just recommend removing that text option or not utilizing that smart plan until you have signed up for Twilio, just to avoid accidentally flooding your tasks. You also have access to your people plans and your published. So people plans are just plans that you already have active. This is essentially all of the smart plans that Scott has downloaded into his account. And then published are smart plans that maybe you created manually and you decided to share 
when you publish a plan, it actually adds it into the library. So all of the folks who have already published plans, that is why we have a library. They're actually the ones that are funding that entire platform, which is again, pretty cool. It's completely peer driven. So it's peer and staff driven. They're able to create smart plans and drop them in here by publishing their own custom smart plans. I'm gonna go back to my people plans. So as far as my people plans go, couple of things that I wanna cover is first things first, we have our name. Names can be editable. So they're completely customizable. If we were to click on the pencil, it's going to allow us to change what that title is. We also have access to click on this little triangle or arrow, whatever you wanna call it. And it's going to tell you exactly what's going to go out with that particular smart plan. So for this one, it was set up just as a simple email. So if you are looking to send out a mass email, and you want it to kind of be at your fingertips, maybe you don't, don't want it to just go out once, but you want every contact that you ever tag as a buyer to get this email as they're being added into your database, you can actually set this. So maybe this is like a buyer email. And as you add people to it, they'll get that email. So that would be a perfect example as to why you may do a one-off smart plan with only an email. You'll also see that some of them have obviously more intricate steps. So it will break that down for you. It tells you that it's adding it to another smart plan as a touch, touch task, touch task, um, and it's letting you know interaction, task with contact, 30-day delay, sends a text message, four-day delay, and it's breaking down exactly what this smart plan's intentions are and what is going to go out with your clients. So generally, I recommend taking a look at those before diving into them just so you kind of have a feel for it. You can also see how many contacts are currently getting that smart plan. As of right now, Scott, I think only has, it should be long-term in neighborhood. So no, no contacts are on any of these except for those two. You'll see a dash. If you do see contacts showing up, you'll notice it's clickable. And I can click on that and it will tell me exactly who that contact is. I now have access to remove it. I have access to remove all. Um, and again, you can just kind of see who's physically on that smart plan. We also have access to see when this was originally created. So when was this launched originally? Created December 25th, 2022, duration one day, meaning the smart plan's only going to run for one day. If you have multiple day smart plans, this usually means that there is a delay in between each action. I do highly recommend when you're setting up your smart plans to make sure that you're not stacking actions on top of each other. That is going to essentially bombard your client with multiple actions at once by putting a day or two day delay, three day delay in between your actions. So like email, then three days, text, then three days, phone call, then five days whatever it may be, it's just going to make sure that you're nurturing the contact instead of sending them two text messages and an email all on the same day. You also have total touches. This is based on how many times that you are communicating with the client directly. So this is just giving you a heads up how many times you're communicating with them. You'll notice that some smart plans may not have touches involved. Um, I have seen cases where agents have set up smart plans just to manipulate tasks to remind them to do things. That's completely fine, but they wouldn't include touches because you're not actually communicating with the client. You're essentially communicating with yourself through the tasks tab. On the right-hand side, we also have access to add a contact, edit, and then we have our three dots that will allow us to make a copy, an exact replica of the smart plan. We have access to publish to library. Again, this is sharing the smart plan with the publish section, which is going to put it into the library, meaning that any agent across the KW network inside the United States or Canada will have access to this plan. We also have access to delete it. If you guys utilize any of these options, this generally means that it is a smart plan that either you manually created or it is a smart plan that you have pulled from the library that was created by a peer or a staff member. If you try to replicate, and I'm going to find one that was created by this, uh, this one, Neighborhood Nurture. <laughs> Notice for my monthly Neighborhood Nurture, copy, publish, and delete are all grayed out. That's because plans created by Keller Williams International are very consistent smart plans. They are essentially set up in a way that edits are not allowed. They don't allow tweaks. They don't allow customizations. They're set up so that you can start using them immediately. They're fantastic starter smart plans. But that being said, they also don't allow you to copy them because you'd essentially be copying the exact same smart plan, which would just cause a ton of confusion. If you can't make any changes, you can just add all of your clients to one smart plan instead of having variations. 
You also can't publish to library because it's owned by Keller Williams International and it's already in the library. It also won't let you delete it specifically because there's a contact on it. If I were to remove this particular contact from this smart plan, it would then allow me to delete it from my plans. When it comes time to adding somebody to a smart plan, if I click on this little button, it's going to allow me to search not only by tags, but I can also manually select contacts, but it is very time consuming that way. I generally recommend clicking on the tags option in order to filter a little bit more cleanly. Um, you can come in here and you can select whichever option you want. It will pull up the contacts that pertain to that particular tag. That being said, when you are adding somebody to a smart plan for this one in particular, it's also going to let me know whether or not a neighborhood is set up. That neighborhood information is specifically for the neighborhood nurture smart plans. There are two of them, which we'll go over shortly, that essentially will send out stats and local listings within those neighborhoods. If you don't have neighborhoods, that contact doesn't qualify for that smart plan, meaning it's kind of like a heads up, don't bother adding them because it's just going to prompt an error, create a task, and then remove them from the smart plan. If you're looking to add bulk contacts to a smart plan, maybe you have more than you know, 30, 40, 50 people that you're trying to add to a smart plan at once. Generally, I recommend doing this from the database portion, which is how we will end class. I'll show you how to bulk add contacts up to 500 a time to a smart plan. This portion here is only going to allow you to select up to 20 per click. So if I go ahead and select all, it's going to let me know I've only selected 20 contacts and I only have 30 overall. So this is just a way to add up to 20 contacts per time. But again, for any agents that have a larger database and you're looking to do it maybe a little bit more um, extensively than 20 contacts a time, I definitely recommend doing it through the database function itself, which again, we'll go over at the end of class for you. For edit, I'm going to go into, let's do, what's our holiday smart plan entail? We'll do our holiday smart plan and we'll make some edits to this guy. So I'm just going to click on edit for this one just to show you guys some of the quick edits that you have access to. Then we'll jump into the library. So in order to make an edit to a smart plan, first things first is you can't have any contacts on that smart plan. So if you have active contacts that are receiving this smart plan, they would need to be removed. So before you start adding contacts, first things first, I always recommend that you add yourself as kind of like a test contact in your database and add yourself to the smart plan so you get everything first. Generally, this is how you're going to pick up on small discrepancies. If you're pulling a smart plan from the library, it may have another agent's name on it because they're the ones who created it. This is going to allow you to make sure that the contact information is correct, that all of the data is correct. Maybe it references a city or a state that you don't actually practice real estate in. It's the easy easiest way to kind of catch any discrepancies by having yourself receive everything. So always make sure that you run yourself through the entire smart plan before you start adding people to it. But that being said, when we come into our edit section, I don't have anybody on this smart plan currently, we have a couple of options that we can kind of make tweaks to. First things first, we have a trigger event. This is possibly one of my most favorite things about smart plans. You can set up a trigger event based on tags. What this means is as you add new people to your database that have a particular tag, or if you manually tag somebody in your database a particular tag, and that tag is set up as a trigger, it will automatically add that contact to this smart plan. Nothing else is required from you as the agent. That is so cool. It's going to save you so much time when it comes time to organizing your database, especially if you're in the process of importing your contacts into command. Go ahead and get a couple of your starter smart plans launched and put together, set up with a tag trigger, and then as you're adding those contacts, they will automatically be added to those smart plans for you. In order to set that up, I'm going to go ahead and just click on the add trigger event. And you'll notice that category and trigger event are locked in. It automatically says contacts, and then it should say contact tag. Then I have access to select tags. So I'm going to go ahead and just do, let's do this guy. Once I plug that tag in, I have access to choose my trigger. 
And then it's just letting me know that any contacts that are already tagged with this tag will not be added to the smart plan. This is only moving forward. So if you already have, say, 50 people in your database with that tag and you want them on the smart plan, that's where we would go into our contacts tab and manually add them up to 500 at a time. But if you're in the process of reorging your database, maybe you're manually creating some tags, you're refiltering contacts, that's where this trigger event is going to come into play and it's going to save you a ton of time. So any new person getting this tag will automatically be added to my holiday smart plan. I can go ahead and confirm trigger, then it locks it in here. You can add up to 10 tags per smart plan, which is, again, pretty cool. So if you guys are interested in setting that up, that is how you can do it. You also have access to make edits to the physical actions. Again, this is a smart plan that was pulled from the library that was created from a peer. This was not created through Keller Williams International. So if you guys are using a smart plan that was created by a peer or another staff member, you will have full editable access. You can change what days is set to be, you know, this is taking a three-day delay, then it's sending an email, then it's doing a seven-day delay, and then it would essentially remove them from the smart plan. For this one, if you want to do an extra day, remove a day, whatever it may be, maybe you want to add a text message and I want it to start with the text message, I can use my arrows to kind of move things around. Um, I have access to, we'll put text message first. Um, I have access to adjust that. I have access to type in my text message. Um, I can set it up as static or dynamic. As you hover over it, it does break down what both of these things are. Static means that it's sending out one text message. So it's not recommended if you have the same smart plan repeating itself. If you are looking to create one smart plan and you want it to kind of repeat itself five or six times, then you would want to use dynamic. What dynamic is going to let you do is type in one text message, two text message, three, four, five, however many times you want it to repeat. Once you actually create your dynamic text messages, what happens is, say they send out the smart plan first, everybody who's on that first overhaul of the smart plan is going to get text message one. Once it gets all the way down to the bottom and it essentially restarts the smart plan, it knows that, okay, John Smith is on his second time for the smart plan. He's going to get text message too. But Sarah is only on her first round of the smart plan. So she's going to get text message one. It's smart enough to differentiate those contacts. So it allows you to restart the smart plan and it will essentially send out whichever text message applies to that particular contact profile based on how many times they've run through the smart plan. Pretty cool. So just something to keep in mind if that's something that you guys are interested in. I'm going to go ahead and delete this because it will give me an error message due to our big, scary red, we don't have Twilio. You guys also have access to add make a phone call. Make a phone call is something that I recommend that you keep in mind as you're adding. Um, making a phone call is essentially an action task that you would be responsible to do as the agent. All it's doing is it's essentially going to create a task into your tasks, but it will allow you to kind of add the information that will help you. So for task name, overall, do something that's going to make sense. So I recommend doing, say, contact first name, and then maybe space, and then contact phone number. What that means is when you add John Smith, phone number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, it's actually going to show up as a task as call John Smith, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. In task description, you can put a quick little blurb of what you want to chat with them about. Maybe you want to talk to them about the housing market. Maybe you want to talk to them about holidays. Maybe there's something specific, you know, you did like a buyer-seller seminar recently, and these are all the follow-up people, and you want to bring that up. Whatever it may be, you can make these as specific or as general as you'd like, but it, I recommend in the task description, utilize that as kind of like a bullet point notes column of what you want to hit when you have that conversation. We also have access to set up an automated task, which is very similar to the make a call. However, this is strictly a task. So the make a call one is essentially going to prompt you to call them. A task, this would be perfect if maybe you're looking to write a handwritten note, or maybe you're looking to schedule a coffee meet and greet, or whatever it may be. This is more so just a task for you as the agent. You also have access to set a delay. So as far as our delay, this is the same thing as above. We have our seven day delay. We have our three day delay. I generally recommend doing some sort of delay in between each action, just so again, you're not accidentally calling, texting, calling, texting all in one day. 
this is just going to make sure that they are separated with at least a day or two. You also have access to add to another smart plan. If you are utilizing this step, make sure that you've already downloaded the smart plan from the library. That way you'll have access to pull it from your dropdown. Um, and if you guys are unsure what smart plan you want to add, that's also completely fine. Jump into the library. Chances are something will make sense for the existing smart plan that you're either utilizing or maybe something will piggyback off of it for you. So if you're doing like a Facebook follow-up, maybe you want to do like, a, I wanted to confirm your contact information is correct. You guys can set that up as well. Um, that's something we can do using the email portion. So for our email portion, you guys have access to embed a couple of different quick, quick links. Um, first things first is our first name. So you can even just do something like hi, first name. And then you also have access to add in phone number, birthday, home anniversary, all of that information pulls based off of their primary contact information on their contact profile. So you can even utilize smart plans to confirm contact information that you have on file, which is definitely helpful when it comes time to scrubbing your database. As far as subjects for emails, they are required to have a subject. You guys would type that in here. We have our simple design and or we have our simple email type and then we have our design email type. Simple is exactly what you see is what you get. It's all text. It doesn't have an elaborate email signature. It's just kind of like a quick email that you would shoot out and you would want to make sure that you also add your information as a manual email signature here. It will not pull from your marketing profile. For designs, when I swap over to designs, you'll notice that it allows me to select a de design from my email content. This is pulling directly from my email design templates that were created in designs. So you would need to create that prior. If I go ahead and select my design, it pulls up any options that you may have dabbled with previously. We have a couple Christmas holidays. And once I select the actual design I want to utilize, <laughs> It will have me check off, got it. And it will pull up the full design that would be going out. So it's essentially letting me know, and this is your tricky footer that I was mentioning earlier. It's letting me know exactly what would be sent out. It's essentially going to hyperlink the first name. It's going to pull that from the contact profile. It's going to pull the first name from the contact profile. And it's going to pull your agent first name from your marketing profile. And then all of this information is going to pull from the marketing profile. Now, one of the big things I want to address, because this always causes panic, when you come up to your options, if you click preview, you'll notice that all of your information shows up, but it still shows contact first name, contact first name. That's because we're previewing the template. It's not linked to a contact profile. So if you send out a test email or anything along those lines, it's not going to pull that actual information, but you can select a contact and by the time, once I select a contact, it's now plopping in my information. So this is my contact profile. Now it says, dear Brittany, it says happy holidays, Brittany, instead of customer contact. So just keep that in mind. The reason why it still shows like not the actual name is because you're not previewing it with a particular contact profile. You can select any of these and it will essentially plug in whatever information they have in their contact profile. So you can make sure it shows up the way that you want it to. But your footer looks beautiful, pulls all of the information the way it's supposed to. I'm gonna go ahead and X out of that. I'll do save and then I'll X out and we'll save changes. And that's just going to drop that design in the email. So what that means is once they get to action eight, it's going to send that holiday email to the contact and it's automatically going to address them accordingly. So if it's going to John, it's going to say, hi, John, happy holidays, John, which again, pretty cool. It just customizes a little bit further for you. If you guys do ever make any edits, generally what I recommend is as you're making those edits, click the little check mark pertaining to that section just to make sure that you're locking it in. Um, a lot of these are going to give me error messages because we didn't set these up. So I'm going to delete a couple of them. But as you guys do make edits, say, for example, I change this to like four or five days, save them as you go through them. Um, generally, what should happen is once you've done your full smart plan, you can just click save on the top right. I have seen circumstances where it didn't save throughout the course of it. And when clicking on save, it only saved that last action. So better safe than sorry. Just save them as you're kind of making your updates to your actions. And then once you're completely done, come in here and do save, and that will save the entire smart plan. 
So now that I've gone ahead and kind of made edits to the existing smart plan, I can back out. And that's going to update automatically on our holiday smart plan. That's the one we were dabbling with. You'll notice that all of my steps have changed and now my phone calls added, my days were updated. So that's how you guys can make edits to those. As far as finding smart plans, so you guys do have access to, again, create a brand new smart plan, which the process is the exact same. The only thing I definitely recommend is taking a look at the library first, because a lot of times you may have an idea and you may be unsure how to implement it, what's the best way to kind of get the ball running. Take a look at the library, because chances are there's something here that will already help you get that ball rolling. So I'm going to go ahead and click on our library tab. For the library itself, we have that same search feature. This, however, is going to search the entire library. So I'm going to go ahead and type in something as simple as Facebook. So maybe you did like a Facebook ad and you want to do a follow up. That's completely fine. So when I type that in, it pulls up 630 smart plans. That's a little bit daunting. You don't want to go through 630 smart plans. So we can narrow this down a little bit further by using a filter. I can plug that in and say, okay, I want the duration to run maybe three to six months. If you have a specific author, you can also search by a specific author. Maybe you want touches. I want to make sure it has at least three touches. I want to make sure downloads. I want to make sure maybe 70 people have downloaded it and used it already. And I want only smart plans that have four or five stars. So this allows you to kind of narrow it down a little bit more. And then I can do find results. And now we have none. Well, that's good. We'll remove the three to six months. That might be a long time. So now I have 22 smart plans, which is a lot more reasonable to kind of take a look at and say, okay, this one applies to me, this one doesn't, and kind of narrow it down from there. So you do have your title, you have your quick blurb, you have how many steps are included, how many downloads, when it was originally published, the duration of the overall plan, how many touches, and then you can also view the steps. So this is the equivalent of clicking that little arrow on our smart plans under my smart plans. It's going to show us exactly what the intentions of this plan is. We can actually see the text messages. We can generally see a, a glimpse of this simple email. Um, if there is an HTML email on any of these, you cannot see the HTML email until you physically add the smart plan. But keep in mind, just because you add a smart plan, you're not committed to it. You can still delete it. You can still make edits to it. You're not stuck with it. It's kind of just giving you that editable access so you can see exactly what would be going out. So as far as all of these smart plans go, you do have access to locate all of them. If you do have one that comes across as being one that you want to download, again, I can click on my add to smart plan. It lets me tweak the title. I generally recommend either keeping the title the same or just adding something to it. That way you don't accidentally keep adding the same smart plan to your uh, My Smart Plans, um, just so you kind of keep them coherent with one another. That, But if you do want to completely change it, you can. You have full access to completely customize what's, what this will show up as. And then once I click download, it gives you that little green ribbon. And what that means is it's now going to show up underneath the My Smart Plans. If you guys are looking for just newer smart plans, you can also do this based on, and I'll remove my filters. You can also just do this based on, we have our featured. These are featured through Keller Williams International. They're generally older smart plans. Um, they don't seem to update as frequently as well, but these are smart plans that are available to you. They usually have very high downloads as well. You have your Keller Williams provided smart plans. These are going to be the plans that are limited on editability. So don't panic if you are utilizing one of these plans and it's not letting you edit anything. There is a reason for that. It's because they are meant to be sent out as is. Um, so it's kind of to avoid you accidentally removing something that may alter the plan altogether. One of the big ones that I do wanna to touch upon for Keller Williams provided smart plans is the birthday smart plan. There is also a home anniversary smart plan. These two smart plans provided by Keller Williams International, both birthday and home anniversary, are the only two smart plans that are date specific based on the contact profile. So if you are looking to send out a holiday or holiday smart plan, that's a little bit different. But if you're looking to send out a birthday smart plan or a home anniversary smart plan based on the date that is on that contact profile, these are the only two smart plans that will actually see the date 
on the contact profile and trigger itself accordingly. There are no replicas of that feature. So if that's something you guys are interested in, just keep that in mind. I did see the question come through about holiday smart plans, which I'll go over how to trigger those in a minute once we jump into the database. Um, but there is a way to send those out all on the same day. The next section is top rated. These are generally newer smart plans. Also, again, higher downloads. Um, a lot of times these tend to be holiday ones. Um, if you haven't noticed, Halloween, Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, Memorial Day, um, you guys do have access to these. And again, these are just smart plans that your peers may have set up previously. And now you have access to add them to your smart plans and make edits to fit your needs. You also have what's new. These are normally created same day. They're brand new, maybe only have one or two downloads or these actually have none. It looks like they are absolutely brand new. So if these are something that you also might be interested in, you can still view the steps and download it. It's just kind of breaking them into different categories if you're completely unsure what you're looking for. Um, so you guys do have access to all of this. So just kind of keep in mind, you can come in here, poke around, add the smart plan, make edits, set yourself up as a test contact, and just kind of let that start rolling for you. Um, the other one that I did not cover is the neighborhood nurture. You have a bi-weekly and a monthly neighborhood nurture. We do have a quick tip video that goes over how to set those up specifically. I am definitely biased. Those are my favorite. Um, you essentially can add contact, your add neighborhoods to your contact profile. And those two smart plans, both monthly and bi-weekly neighborhood nurture, will automatically send local stats and active residential listings within those neighborhoods, which is pretty cool. Um, so I'm going to show you guys how to launch that one and also how to send a holiday smart plan. So now that we've gone through the library, we'll go back to my smart plans just so I can show you guys the one I just downloaded right at the top by the date. We're good to go. Um, and now that you guys are seeing that this is showing up, I'm now going to jump into my contacts just to show you guys how to send out not only a mass smart plan, but also how to trigger it based on a date. So if you guys are looking to send out like a St. Patrick's Day smart plan, do you have to trigger it two days before St. Patrick's Day or can you set it up now? And the answer is you can set it up now and it will just happen on St. Patrick's Day. So I'm going to jump into contacts. And in order to bulk do anything in the database, you just need to select at least one person. It doesn't even matter if it's only one person. You just have to select one. You'll notice the second I checked that person off, notice this box appears. So I can do this in bulk and I can do it up to 500 contacts per time, or I can just select one contact. No matter what I do, I'm gonna get access to this dropdown. For the folks who wanna add 500 contacts to one smart plan at once, you're gonna wanna click that magical clickable box. And then we wanna make sure that we have up to 500 selected. And then you can just start doing your bulk action. You also want to make sure that if there are specific contacts you're trying to send this out to, make sure you filter them accordingly first and you don't accidentally like mass email people you're not intending to. Um, so always make sure that you are also setting your filters up the way that you'd like. For our bulk action, we have a couple of options here. We do have a full tip video that goes over everything on here. Um, but for today, we're going to focus on the add to smart plan portion. When I click on add to smart plan, it's automatically going to pull up all of my active smart plans that are showing up under my smart plans. So again, these are smart plans that you should have already scrubbed. Make sure that you've already sent it out to yourself. I can't stress that enough. Sometimes a phone number is hidden. Sometimes pronouns are hidden. Sometimes they just look a little bit funky. Maybe they're not mentioning what you want to mention. Maybe they're mentioning something else. We've seen it happen firsthand. So just send it to yourself, go through the full course of the smart plan as a pretend client before you start bulk adding people to smart plans. It's just personal piece of advice. Um, but once you have done that, I can come in here. I'll use my holiday one as an example. So I can go ahead and select the smart plan that I want to utilize. It's automatically going to let me know that my contacts are missing phone numbers, specifically because if I were utilizing Twilio, which I'm not in this one, but I am utilizing a phone call option. It's letting me know that neither of these contacts actually have a phone number on file. I can add to plan anyway, or I can essentially cancel this. I'm going to go ahead and add to plan anyway. I have access to either start now. My goodness. I have access to start now, 
Start now means that it's going to start kind of trickling out. It doesn't mean that all 500 contacts are going to get it instantly. It starts trickling out and it usually takes a couple of hours for every contact to receive it. But if you're setting up a smart plan that doesn't require you as the agent to do anything, it's 100% Twilio text-based or email-based, you can add a ton of contacts at once. If you have a smart plan that has actual actions that you are going to have to perform, phone calls, you're going to have to manually send a text message. Maybe you're doing a task so you can handwrite a letter. Anything along those lines, stagger them. This is going to stagger those automatically for you. And when you click on this, it will allow you to do, it gives you all of the um, stipulations here. I only have two contacts, so it's only going to give me an option for two. But if you're selecting up to 500, it's normally 20 to 25. Meaning I can put maximum contacts a day, 20 contacts a day. What it's going to do is it's going to add those first 20 today. It's going to add the next 20 tomorrow, the next 20 the next day, next 20 the next day, until I've added all 500 contacts. What this is going to do is it's going to stagger the tasks that you are responsible for as the agent as they come back. So you don't accidentally end up with 500 phone calls on a Wednesday in three months. It's going to make sure that you're only doing 20 a day through the course of the next couple of months. So that's the best way to kind of get that started if you're looking to essentially manually do any tasks that are going to be linked to that smart plan. For the holiday folks, you do have access to start all on the following date. So if this were say like a St. Patrick's one, I can come in here and just have it sent out. Maybe you wanna do it a couple of days before, do it on like the 14th of March. I can go ahead and select that. And what that means is all two contacts, 500 contacts, however many are on here, it will trigger the plan on the 14th of March. That being said, if you have delays involved, if you maybe start it with a two-day delay, take that into consideration. If you start it with like a seven-day delay, you end it with a couple-day delay. Anytime you're doing a one-off email, I always say put a couple-day delay on it. Otherwise, what happens is you add them to the smart plan, it shoots that email out, and then it removes them from the smart plan. It doesn't actually record whether or not, like, I'm trying to think of the best way to explain this. It doesn't record if they're on the smart plan and already received the email. So what we've seen agents do in the past is add, say, 500 contacts to an email, start it now. The contacts get the email, but the agent then goes back in, doesn't see anybody on the smart plan because they had already gotten the email, so they were removed. They're now re-adding these contacts several times to the smart plan, not understanding that every single time they're adding them to the smart plan, this contact is getting another copy of that email. So that's why doing a two or three day delay lets them kind of sit on that smart plan so you don't accidentally add them more than once. So it's kind of just like, think of it as a safety net. But for the people who are trying to send it out on a specific date, that will work the same way. They'd essentially sit on that smart plan until March 14th. Once I click on confirm, it's gonna go ahead and automatically add that smart plan. And now these two people are going to get emails on March 14th of 2020. I hope I clicked 2023, but of 2023, they'll get that holiday email. As far as those neighborhood smart plans, I'm just gonna show you guys how to add neighborhoods to a contact profile. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up my test one. And then you'll see, I have a couple of neighborhoods already added here. You do have access to add additional neighborhoods or your original neighborhood, your primary pulls based on the address, either the primary address, which is noted down here. Once that's plugged in, it does pull that primary neighborhood as well. You do have access to add additional. It even recommends some that are in that local area. But once I click on add neighborhood, I can either start typing in neighborhoods. I'll be honest, I'm horrible with that type of stuff. I don't know the neighborhoods around me. So I generally rely on the map. So I do find, a, find on the map and I can zoom in or out and actually pinpoint where that location is. And it's automatically gonna show me the neighborhoods that are around. So I can just check off the ones that are maybe very local to that property, thus allowing me to save them to the contact profile meaning that if I go to add this person to that neighborhood nurture smart plan, they are going to be getting neighborhood or neighborhood information, stat information for these particular neighborhoods, which is pretty cool. Um, as far as smart plans go, oh, I'm on the holiday one. As far as smart plans go, once you send that out, the example that I pulled up earlier for Lori, this is exactly what it sends out as. It has the neighborhood information, it pulls the stats, it pulls the, the quick, um, 
the quick map that shows you the location. Um, and it generally pulls all of the stats as well. Um, Lori recently retired from real estate, so I'm not sure if this will work, but let me see. No, the URL. Oh, yes, the URL is still live. So once I click on the actual search neighborhood, this is what it looks like. It has her logo, it has her brokerage logo, pulls all of the active listings for that particular neighborhood. And then as I scroll down, I still have all of her information. Um, it allows me to toggle through all of the active listings. I can pull up an actual listing, I can look at it. It gives me full access as a client, which is really cool. They also have access to filter their own listings if there's something more specific they're looking for. Um, they also have access to, again, toggle between all of the neighborhoods that they have on their contact profile. They can even opt to add their own neighborhoods, which is, again, pretty cool. Puts a little bit of power into their hands if there's an additional area they're interested in. They also have access to stats. So when I click on neighborhood stats, it's going to pull up all of the nitty gritty for that neighborhood, what the average price is, how many homes are being sold, how many homes are under contract, are for sale. Um, this might be a little bit funky. Again, she's not with KW. She just retired. So they're, she's in the process of being off board. It's, this is a horrible example. Um, but it shows me like 47 homes for sale, 13 are pending, 97,000 average sale price. Let's me go down to some of the stats, current stats, sold stats. I can check <laughs> check on um, local areas. For example, generally in this section, not a whole lot going on here. This is a very beach community. Um, but sometimes you'll see like, okay, there's a Target, there's a pizza place, there's a daycare, there's a park. It's going to list all of that as well. Here we go. Underneath our places, it lets me know all of the restaurants. I can click on groceries and pull up, okay, there's a Publix nearby. It lets you kind of see what's in that neighborhood as a client so they can just better familiarize themselves. So pretty cool. And all you guys have to do as agents is make sure that you have their email address um, on your command platform. So making sure that you have an email address as their primary email and make sure that you have a couple of neighborhoods that they're interested in on their contact profile. And you would just add them to the Neighborhood Nurture Smart Plan, whether it's bi-weekly or monthly, and they will get that email bi-weekly or monthly. So that's pretty cool. So if you guys do bump into anything as you kind of poke around, um, definitely just let us know. We're happy to take a look. But that pretty much sums up all of our smart plans. If you guys are having issues with emails going out, definitely let us know. We also recommend reaching out to KWRI if you guys are seeing any issues. Generally, if you click on the question mark on the top right-hand corner and the chat with support, this will pull up an interactive chat that will allow you to communicate with them. So if you guys are in a situation where something is bouncing, feel free to touch base with them directly as well, as they can usually see what's blocking that for you. Um, but I hope you guys have a great rest of your Wednesday. Um, and yeah, if you guys need anything, just let us know. Support at scottlurymarketing.com.